Cloth is one of the most influential rulers in the north, as she is the Queen of Sintra, a kingdom located south of the Yuruga as well as next to the Great Sea. The possession of this kingdom gives the kingdom a lot of power, as they control both connections to the sea and the Yuruga at the mouth. Sintra is considered one of the bigger kingdoms in the north, as well as its being the only entrance to the north west of the Amal Mountains. Before I talk more about Kalanth, let's talk about her parents. Kalanth was born to King Dagorod of Sintra and Adalia. Of these two, Adalia is the most interesting, as she has the elder blood. Actually, they kind of both have it, but Adalia is the one which has the active version. Adalia was born into nobility, as her father was the Count of Garamon, a county in Temeria. She married Rockbart, the Duke of Elander. He, however, died half a year later due to an overdose of medication that increased its sexual potency. After his death, Adalia delved deep into politics. The Queen of Temeria at the time, Bienvenue la Louvre, didn't like her interference and had to get her out of her way. So she arranged a marriage between Adalia and the Prince of Sintra, Dagorod. Sintra couldn't refuse this, as at the time the King of Sintra, Corbett, had broken relations with several nearby kingdoms. Therefore, they needed the support of Temeria. This is where Adalia and Dagorod become important, as they were related to each other. Their grandparents were siblings. This resulted in two branches that had the elder blood gene coming back together. The person born out of this union was Kaloth. Something to note here, however, is that Adalia had the ability to be able to raise a drawbridge with a twitch of her eyebrows, using the magical powers in her, from her blood. Kaloth, however, didn't have any magical abilities. It seemed to have skipped a generation, as her daughter and granddaughter both do have these abilities. Kaloth was born in 1218. Only 14 years later, in 1232, she became the Queen of Sintra, after her father died. People didn't seem to have faith in her, as she was a young female ruler. They thought she was weak. They, however, were proven very wrong not long after. A year after she became queen, she fought her first battle, and she won. This battle, known as the Battle of Hogebus, on the field, 3,000 troops died in battle between Sintra and Nazir. Nazir invaded Sintra to try and get more, more money and coin out of the southern villages. So she defended her villages. However, the promise of the entire war came down to money. 3,000 soldiers didn't die for the country. They died for money. But people didn't know that. Glant, however, did. As she despised the songs sung about her performance at that battle. Glant will be praised in those songs. For years after. As well as she received the nickname the Lioness of Sintra. In the years after the battle, it became time for Kalanth to find a partner. There were rumors spreading that Kalanth might have had affairs with a distant cousin, Meeve. These rumors resulted in that the princes of other kingdoms refused her hand. Kalanth also didn't want to have another person rule her land and therefore it took some time to find the right suitor. But eventually she did. Rukner, the Duke of Salm, from the Kingdom of Ebbing. At the age of 17, Kalanth married Rukner, who was 24 at the time. Even though Rukner was older, Kalanth was always in charge, and he knew it. Since Rukner came from a lower nobility than Kalanth came, she always had more power in court. Two years later, once Kalanth reached the age of 19, she gave birth to her daughter, Bavetta. However, unbeknownst to her, around this time, Rukner had almost died. However, unbeknownst to her, around this time, 
Rukner had almost died if it weren't for the help of the urchin of Erlenbot. As payment for saving the king, the urchin invoked the law of surprise. Rukner didn't want to face Kalan's reaction when she would hear what he had promised to him. He didn't say a word about it for years, until he was lying on his deathbed. In 1246, he passed away due to smallpox at the age of 35. It was only then, once he was moments away from dying, that he revealed to Coulant what he had happened those years ago. He knew that she would be furious, so he waited until the moment when he wouldn't have to live to see her reaction. In the years after his passing, Kalanth ruled Sintra alone. She had suitors that wanted her hand in marriage like King Urviel of Verden and Venslav of Bruges, but her heart went to a different man, Eist Tursig. They were hiding their relationship for years, until the day when Pavetta turned 15 years of age. Kalanth was aware that the urchin would come to claim her daughter's hand, therefore she had hired Geralt of Rivia. During the events at the throne room, Ice kind of grew slightly jealous, uh, jealous at Geralt, who kept talking with Kalanth. Kind of saw him as competition. Because he didn't know that it was Geralt of Rivia and that he was a witcher. But I've talked about these events in the video of Ice Tursig, and I prefer not to talk about the same thing twice, so therefore I go for these events in a short summary. Jurchen showed up, people got mad at him. Rainfarn stabbed the urchin, Pavetta almost destroys the palace of Sintra, and Kalanth and Eist declare their love for each other amidst the broken priestess of the throne. During these events, Geralt saved Dunny, the urchin, and asked for the law of surprise, because he knew he expected that Pavetta was pregnant. After these events, Pavetta and Dunny, the urchin, married as well as Kalanth and Eist. What is most important about this event, I think, is that they show how people respect Kalanth. It shows that people will follow her orders and how she seems to try and control people. But at the same time, you could see that it's um, there are a lot of fake smiles. She learned how to behave. It also shows that she's mastered the art of fake smiles. Everything seemed to be great for Kalanth. She had married Eis Tursig, the man who she seemed to love, which also created a stronger tie between Skellige and Sintra. Her daughter had given birth as well to Ciri, and Sintra seemed at peace. Due to the good relationship between Sintra and Skellige, the royal Sintrian family often visited the Isles. However, Kalanth feared the moment that Geralt would return to take Ciri to Kaer Morhen. She didn't want the Witcher to take her sole grandchild. Therefore, right after Ciri was born, she ordered Mausek, Hermion, to go and kill Ciri, so that Geralt would never be able to claim her, to take her away. Mausek was ready to go and kill her, as Kalanth wasn't someone you would refuse. Right before he left, Kalanth had revoked her wish for Ciri to be killed. See, it seemed to indicate that she had a change of mind. About five years after getting married, both Pavetta and Dunny went on a ship to sail back to Sintra after they went to Skellige. Pavetta, however, felt there was something wrong and therefore left Ciri with Kalanth on the Isles, who stayed a bit longer in Skellige, while they set out to sea. The ship got caught in a storm on their way to Sintra, and both Dunny and Pavetta were never seen again. Kalanth was in deep mourning for a long time. She was angry at both Eist and Krach, who she blamed for the incident. Right after it all happened, Eist went to sea, searched for the bodies, but he returned empty-handed. Kalanth's anger with Krach had to do with the fact that he was the one who allowed the ship to leave, and that he should have been aware of the storm at sea. She forced Krach to swear an oath to her, and he did. This oath if Kalanth never claimed it, it was also claimable by Ciri. Kalanth, now only having her granddaughter left, grew more and more protective of her. About the same time she started trying to marry her off to other princes. For she 
fear the day when Count Vivian would try and take a granddaughter away from her. It would be harder if she was already married to another prince. Geralt had told her that he would return six years after he had saved Dunny at the feast of Pavetta's 15th birthday. He would come to take the child to be trained as a witcher and undergo the trial of the grasses. Glanth didn't want to lose her and therefore decided to try and trick Geralt. She hid Ciri amidst a group of similar aged boys and told Geralt that he could pick one of the children from the group as she really didn't want Geralt to take her. She talked to him about how the poets of the future would retell that day's events as if Geralt would have picked the right child because the powers of destiny and how it would be kind of like a fairy tale. But both Kalanth and Geralt knew that the world doesn't work like a fairy tale. However, she tried to talk to him about destiny. She wasn't sure if destiny was real, but she seemed to be leaning more towards believing in it, as she still feared it. She asked him what he thought of destiny, and Geralt told her about how he didn't believe in it. Geralt made it clear he didn't want to take the child from Kalanth if she didn't want it. He, however, just wanted to look the child in the eye to see if destiny was real. With the conversation shifting to children that were to become witchers, Kulanth grew curious about the topic and wanted to learn more about it from Geralt. She had heard that most children died and never became witchers. However, the odds had proven to be far worse than she thought. She was afraid to hand over Ciri to Geralt. The chances of success seemed to be low, as there had never been a female that underwent the trial of the grasses, and the thought of Ciri becoming sterile if she survived wasn't something she looked forward to, as because that would mean the end of her bloodline. Geralt, who still thought that Pavetta and Dunny had a son and not a daughter, reassured Kalan that he would not take her would not take the child away from her. Kalanth, however, seemed to be afraid of destiny and how she might be punished by destiny for not giving Ciri to Geralt. Geralt kept reassuring her that if destiny would punish someone, it would be him, because he refused to take the child. Over the course of the conversation, Kalanth and Geralt seemed to let no respect for each other. And it seemed like she no longer really disliked him after what happened after Pavetta's feast. Once it was time for Geralt to go, Kalanth told him that she had a feeling that this would be the last time they would meet. She was right. Geralt didn't see her anymore after these events. Although he could have, he didn't. Kalanth continued her rule. She tried marrying Ciri to several princes, including Kistrin of Verdun. She, however, quickly ended the engagement after she had learned of what Urviel of Verdun was doing with his attacks on merchants that he made look like it were the dryads to try and frame them, to justify his actions. She raised Ciri over the years, until fate happened. In 1263, Nilfgaard invaded Sintra, and Kalanth didn't want to get down without a fight. As she marched her army to the southern border, to the Mardinal Steps, here she faced off against the invader. Both Kalanth and Eist fought on the battlefield alongside their soldiers, but luck wasn't on their side, as Kalanth was injured and Eist was killed by an arrow to the eye. Kalanth was taken back by the few surviving troops that they had to the capital of Sintra. However, the soldiers were too few in numbers. They couldn't defend the city, and therefore they took refuge in a keep, barricading themselves inside. The Nilfgaardian majors, however, made quick work of these barricades, and Kalanth, with a few of her troops, and Ciri, were now stuck in the inner keep. Thanks to the enchantments on the inner keep, they managed to stay safe for a total of four days. After the fourth day, Nilfgaard got inside. To save themselves from dying at the hand of the Nilfgaardians, the women killed their children, and they in turn were killed by their husbands, who in turn committed suicide. Kalanth wanted that someone would kill her before Nilfgaard got to her. However, no one had the courage and dared to do it. To prevent being captured by Nilfgaard, she jumped down from the tower, dying upon hitting the ground. 
She, just like her kingdom, had fallen. Her body was never found, and two empty caskets in her memory were placed on the continent. One by the Skelligers next to Aistis' grave, and one below the castle of Sintra by Emir, the Emperor of Nilfgaard. Kalanth died at age 45, even though many believed at first glance that she was way older due to her ashen hair. She was a proud ruler and earned both the respect from her subjects as well as from the rulers from other kingdoms. However, in the end, destiny might have killed her, for had she have given Ciri to Geralt at their last meeting together, would Nilfgaard still have invaded Sintra? And would she maybe still be queen? That was it for Kalanth. What do you think about the Lioness of Sintra? Was her death a consequence of her refusing to give her child to Geralt? Till the next video. Bye.